you hadn't worn it for a month. Now, there are certain things that we don't wear every day or that we even wear every season, but at least it gives you a starting point about what you are wearing and what you're not wearing, and that makes it easier to, to let go. Some people have trouble letting go unless they know it's going to, they don't want it just to get thrown away. <coughs> there are lots of places that will accept donations and lots of people who will be happy to have them. Um, lots of great organizations that are supported by consignment stores and thrift stores. So consider that if you're getting rid of things. The other thing is your utensil drawer. So, go into your utensil drawer. Take out some things that you use all the time. A slotted spoon, a regular spoon, a couple of spatulas, a variety of other things. And then take the things that you may not use all the time. Now, if you're a cook, you might use a whisk. I can't tell you the last time I used a whisk. But this came from my house. So take these things that you don't use all the time and put them in a bag or a box. I don't even know what this is for. Um, a pie lift. A, a knife will do just as well for me. Thank you very much. Um, a lemon squeezer and a baster. This is the only one that you get sort of a, if you don't need it, um, you still might be able to keep that one. Put it in a bag or a box. Get it out of the kitchen. A little bit of a walk away from the kitchen. During the next month, if you need it, Take it out of the bag or box, bring it back and put it in the utensil drawer. At the end of the month, <coughs> these are things you have not used in a month. Now I said the baster. If you are the person who does the big family meals, you can keep the baster. <laughs> Otherwise, unless you've got a really good use for it, like maybe watering a plant, you don't get to keep the baster. But those are two very simple ways to um, downsize. And again, you can use that same with the, the junk drawer. Take everything out of the junk drawer. Put back in the things you know you're going to use, maybe a pair of scissors, some strings, some tape, uh, a few twist ties. By a few twist ties, I mean three to five. I don't mean 25. Um, so put those back in the junk drawer. Take everything else, put it out of the way. If you need it, bring it and put it back in the junk drawer. At the end of the month, the rest of it is truly junk. So those are the way. And so you can also do this with your medicine cabinet. You can do this with your uh, pantry. I have worked with folks in their pantry and reached back into the back of the pantry, grabbed a can, tried to pull it loose. It wouldn't come. It had stuck. It had drained out of the can. It had been there so long. Look at the sell by, best by, expire by dates. They all mean something a little different. I don't know what. But if you're getting close to that date, you might want to consider using it. Um, look at your medicines, and particularly over-the-counter medicines. You know, we can get them and for like a cold season, and we use them this year, but next year we don't. The following year, you know, suddenly you've got this, it may be past date. Look at those and get rid of them. There are ways to get rid of them safely. Flushing them down the toilet is not the best idea, unless you want everybody to be on your cold medicine but there are different ways to do it. And there are some pharmacies that will collect medicines, including government counseling. I went to CVS this week. Yes. And they have a big drawer thing, like a sheet. Uh -huh. And you take the pills and stuff, you just throw them down the sheet. That's wonderful. Because that I, I was trying to figure out how to And make. no cost? Because some of the places they charge. There's no cost for it? There's no cost for them? Uh -huh. Walgreens. Some Walgreens. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I know that there are some places I know at our at our five uh, funeral home locations we have little bags that you can get and dump it in and it will um, have a mixture that sort of deactivates it. The library, yeah, yeah, or at least makes it yucky enough that you don't nobody wants to take it. If you have something in your home that you are giving to a family uh, or a friend, set a de deadline for them to pick it up particularly if you're moving, because having Johnny come and pick up that corner cabinet and park his pickup truck in front of your moving truck on moving day is not a good plan. So say, this is when you need it. You've got to pick it up by this time. So you're great parents, and you've kept Johnny's uh, comic book collection up in your attic for all these years. And every time Johnny comes to visit, you say, Johnny, I need you to take that comic book collection. And Johnny says, I'll get it next time, Mom. 
next time I need you to take it, next time, Mom, at the next gift-giving occasion. <laughs> take Johnny's comic books, you can wrap them up really pretty, you can put a pretty bow on them, and give them to Johnny. At that point, if he does not take his comic books, they are now your comic books. And when you choose to do with them as what you wish, Johnny cannot come back to you later and say, Mom, you threw away my comic books? I'm sure I could have gotten a million bucks for them. At that point, they belong to you. And if you do sell them, tell Johnny you got a million bucks for them. I don't care whether you only got 10. <laughs> so, if you are planning on doing some um, decluttering, you can have family or friends help. There are professionals that will help. If you do get help, get someone who thinks similar to you. Do not get someone who's going to push you to get rid of something that really has true meaning to you. And do not get someone who's going to say, you're going to get rid of that? You don't want to get rid of that. Get someone who thinks the way you do, and, and their job basically is just to sort of poke you in the ribs and say, well, what about this? What about this? That's all their job really is. Any questions about decluttering? I did, yes. Any tips for helping with the thought processes I might need this someday? And I get the picture idea for memories and yeah. that kind of thing, and giving things away to people, but I just I'm, always keep them young. And sometimes, and sometimes I do. And sometimes, sometimes I, do. I do. My first question, would you be able to find it on the day when you needed it? Probably not. Okay. Some days, yes, but probably not. I worked with a woman for six months. She had grown up out in the Midwest um, during a time when you, uh, the, you would take the buttons and the lace off the dress when the dress was sort of worn out. You would save whatever scrap material you could because there was not a Target or a Walmart or something just down the street from her. In today's world, as much as I hate to say it, generally we can go out and buy what we want pretty quickly. I'm a great believer. If you can donate it somewhere, if you can find a, another use for it, please try to do that. But if it's going to take you more time to figure out where it is and find it, chances are that's not going to work. Some people are really organized and they can do that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Um, I always get a little away from my big and I'm probably one of the worst offenders. I have collections of uh, 78s, mm -hmm. 45s, 33s. Do you listen to them? A-tracks. None of them. <laughs> 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 But the thing of it is, they're, they're, I don't know how to say it, uh, they're old, um, and they're like, I don't know whether it would be classics or something like that, you know, I mean, this is, this is hillbilly music, country western, you know, from way back when. Um, I can understand getting rid of it, but how do you take a picture of a record that, you know, you know that you know the music to and everything else, and that you your kids probably don't want to have anything to do with it. Probably not. Sure. Right. And then I have collections of pictures. Pictures, slides. There are people that will scan those for you. Yes, it is going to cost something. So well, I, I can do that myself. Okay. In fact, I'm in the process of doing it. it. But it takes forever <laughs> and organizing it. I mean, I got pictures that... Well, I'm going to make this suggestion. <laughs> How much is the cost of marriage counseling? How much is the cost of picture scanning? But he denies it. <laughs> well, I'm not going to get into marriage way. counseling. Let me put it this way. I'll be clever when she be clever. I don't know. Well, you can, you can make that pack. You know, <laughs> I don't have much. I never had much. I, don't have much. I think what you got to think about is how much is, it, is the music That's work to you? More. Is there a way to maybe put it onto um, something digital? Um, all, all those songs are digital. Any 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 service that you buy, Pandora, there's many of them out there. There's, all those songs are available. It's really but the piece of the record that is what you're you know, what you're holding on to. So that's that's the thing you got. The actual music is really yeah, available. Yeah. You can probably find the music somewhere out there. And, and some of it, you got to realize now that your tapes, eight track, cassette tapes. They're rotting every second they're sitting in there. They, they only have like a shelf life of money. Right. right. They did come yeah. through. And I know that, uh, you know, but I, I can get rid of that. There's no problem with that. Oh, it's the 78 RPM records and all that stuff. There are, there are. Yeah. Um, the idea is to keep those and 
to, to yeah, but like you said, they're valuable. They, they have some values, especially the. Yeah, there are places. I, mean, I think there's yeah. a plan nine came back into Richmond that might buy them. You might look into that, knowing that you can hear the music elsewhere, and then take your pictures and know that someone else may be buying them who will love them also for a long time. I had a client, and, and it's hard, believe me. I'm sentimental. I am deeply sentimental. I, but I had a client, knowing, knowing she had a downside, she would take things, she would literally hold them to her heart, and then she would let them go. Yeah, a lot of my 70s are like from the 1920s and 30s. I have Did you listen recently to the PBS um, after you go to music? Yeah. The Okay. 